everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, my name is Kevin Matais. I'm the head of product at Cherry, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how um, we help customers access Cherry's knowledge graph within our single GraphQL API. So a little bit about what we're going to talk about. Um, first, I'll go over who, who is Cherry? Uh, what kind of products do we have? What sorts of customers do we service? Uh, I'll then start talking about why a REST API doesn't work for us in this scenario. Um, and then we'll go into how Hajura helps support our API products and our clients, and then talk a little bit about how Hajura really helps us support enterprise clients specifically. So thinking about Cherry and our products and customers, um, Cherry helps clients to connect their internal, public, and third-party real estate data to a single source of truth so that they can power their products and processes. Some of the types of clients that we support are insurance companies doing underwriting for property insurance, uh, property developers, investors, lenders, asset and portfolio managers, and then the rest of the miscellaneous real estate tech world, if you will. Um, so an example of internal public and third party real estate data for someone at an acquisitions team for an investor, for example, they will have their own internal data, right? About their portfolio performance of their portfolio. They likely are going to go out and get public data as well. Uh, that public data might be around zoning, it might be around permits, especially if you're on that acquisitions team looking for new properties to invest in. And then you might go out and purchase third party real estate data, right? There's a lot of vendors for everything from paycheck information to mobile location data to demographics information, right? And as an investor, you don't necessarily want your data scientists or your engineers spending all of their time building ETL pipelines, pulling data into one single data warehouse, and then building products on top of that. That's a lot of time and overhead. And Cherry's aim is to do that better, faster, and cheaper than companies could do themselves. So with that, what does our ecosystem look like? Um, on the left, you'll see all of our public data feeds. So we have a lot of public data that we pull into our system, and we use that as our base fabric of data to help clients connect other data sources too. Um, on the bottom left, you'll see the data mart. That's where Cherry goes out and partners proactively with a lot of different third-party vendors to set up connections ahead of time so that when a client comes in and says, hey, I'm already a client of one of these third-party data providers, for us, it's as simple as turning on a switch and adding that data feed to our customer schema. Then customers' internal data will be stored either in applications, right? The uh, classic systems that would get used to track portfolio performance as an investor, for example, um, or direct client feed. So if that, uh, that customer subscribes directly to a data feed, our goal is to pull those all together into our core connect platform that's right here in the middle and deliver that data via GraphQL and a number of other products downstream. So Core Explorer is our front-end product suite. We have a predictive analytics suite. Um, but GraphQL is really what we're going to talk about today. And that's where Hajura comes into play for Cherry. So why, why REST doesn't work for us? Um, we're a data connection company. So with REST, one new connected data set would equal one new endpoint. Right? We ingest a new data set, it comes through our ETL, we want to make it available in the API. It's not a big deal to create one new endpoint. Five new connected data sets. Okay, so we have a customer, they have a number of different partner or public data sets they want to connect. Then they also have some business logic. They say, if you connect objects one and two, I then want to create a third object based on this business logic. So that equals maybe 10 new endpoints. So this is a little bit of a pain. There's more engineering resources involved, but oh well, not too big of a deal. However, once you get to the size that we're talking about, 100 connected data sets plus business logic for a client, that's going to equal 1,000 plus new endpoints, and there's no way that we can support that. Not to mention, 
there's always custom work that comes into play. So a customer might say, hey, Kevin, I'd really like to be able to return the last 10 sales on a property, but only when the mortgage lender is in New York. Okay, so I need to go to the the product teams and say, okay, we're going to need to add data to the property table by joining the transaction table to the mortgage table, but only for this customer and only in the case when the mortgage lender is in New York. So create another endpoint for that. Right. It, it quickly we we run out of scale having to create new JSON definitions, create new tables, build new endpoints every single time we want to do a data connection. So some of the Hajura functionality that's really important to us and our clients is out of the box spatial queries, schema stitching, object aliasing, and custom functions. Right. So with GraphQL already helping to solve some of those issues that we would have had with REST, this is the out-of-the-box functionality from Hajura that really helps us support our clients. So when it comes to spatial queries, a customer might ask, show me all of the properties in this box. So on the right side, you see I've drawn a little box on a map. Uh, The response from Hajura would be, this is very easy. Just use the built-in contained function. Uh, that's native to PostGIS. Everyone understands what that is. And our response is, that is awesome, too easy. We can power this use case today. There's hardly any work that we need to do to help clients support this or support it in our own product suite. When it comes to schema stitching, um, since we're connecting customer-specific data, the security around data is really important to our clients. So a customer will say, I don't want my data in the same database as other clients. And the great response from Hajura is no problem. We can help you schema stitch data together. Um, And what Cherry gets to tell the customer is no problem. You're going to have a seamless user experience. We will have your data in one database, all of the other Cherry data in another database, and schema stitch that together. So regardless of what database everything is coming from, you will have a seamless user experience as you're using our API. Object aliasing. This really becomes a plus for Cherry as a company because we want to version data without the customer having to make code changes. Right, So we want to be able to make changes. We want to be able to change indexes. We want to be able to add fields. We want to be able to add business logic to a to our objects available to the customer without making them change their API calls to say point to object version 10 instead of object version nine. And instead we can take object version 10, add that to our database and then alias it as object version nine. So there's no actual code changes to the client. The new data, the new columns, the new indexes are available to our client without any actual code changes to their API calls. So really helpful when it comes to versioning our data and versioning our objects. Custom functions. Um, Custom functions are really cool because again, we get many requests for uh, custom asks for clients. So a customer ask could be, can I see all of the properties that are between 3.5 and 3.87 miles from my specific list of retail stores that I own, right? My answer and Cherry's answer will probably be yes, but okay, we might have to take some time to to build that into the ETL process and apply that logic. And Hajura with custom functions say, don't worry about that. You can build a PostGIS function in your Postgres database and expose that custom function to your client. So what the client sees is my property function. They can put in the arguments that we've defined as inputs to that function. They can get data back based on that really specific use case they care about without Cherry having to go back and change everything around in the ETL so that all of our spatial analysis and table joins are done in Postgres um, on the fly for that function. Supporting enterprise clients. So one of the ways that Azure really helps support 
all of our enterprise clients is syncing logs directly into BigQuery, which is the data warehousing solution that Cherry uses. And we also use that to generate reports within Looker. So Looker is a popular BI tool. If you're not familiar, uh, it's like Power BI, Tableau, um, just another version of a visualization tool that we use to monitor our API usage. So by logging directly to BigQuery and generating reports in Looker, we can gather information like these reports we have below. So new users within a given month, if a client is trialing our API, we wanna understand how much are they using it? Have they made 10 calls to the API? Have they made zero? Have they made 10,000? Right? That helps us get an idea of whether or not uh, this prospect might actually really be testing and using our API. Uh, on the other side of that, users who have stopped using our API. So if two months ago, they were making a lot of requests and then last month they stopped making requests, we want to understand is there something wrong? Did they run into an error? Is there something we need to reach out to them about in order to fix? Um, so really helpful that we have that log syncing directly to BigQuery. Read replica support. Um, this becomes really important as Cherry supports large enterprise clients with what I consider to be an army of client requests. And consider these API calls in this example. Uh, Azure supports natively read replica support on top of a main database. So we talked a little bit about how we make lots of data updates to our main database. We also have tons of API traffic coming in and we want to separate those. We don't want our API traffic impacting our main database where we're making updates and changing data um, from a load perspective mainly. So by having read replica support on top of our main database, we let the read replicas take all of the load balance activity and protect our main database where we store all of our updates coming in and changes coming into production. Uh, Azure also does an incredible job with API roles and users. So we have sets of standard objects. If you think back to the, an earlier slide when I talked about the public data layer that Cherry has and delivers to all of our clients as our base foundation information, those are standard objects. We want all of our clients to be able to access that consistent set of objects within the API. So we can create roles where clients initially coming into test will all have access to that same set of objects, right? Because we want to trim down the overhead, having to permission every single solitary client, where instead we can just copy over that role. As clients actually sign up and become Cherry customers, that's when their custom objects come in on the right side. So this could be their internal data. It could be other public data sources that maybe Cherry didn't capture. It could be that third party data. And they want that available only for them, right? So we can take that standard API access to Cherry's objects. We can augment it to include the custom customer objects and we can provision that information per client. Uh, one of the other things that's really helpful is being able to filter objects by certain values per API key. So even if we had a standard public data set, but some clients say only want data in New York while other clients want data nationwide, we can apply a filter to that standard object and say, hey, client one gets access to only New York within that object and client two gets access to all of the nationwide data within that object. So really helping us not only with powering GraphQL, but being a true APIM system that helps us provision access, um, set rate limits, support the read replicas and the client loads that we're expecting, um, all part of the Hajura solution. So, when it comes to Cherry and Hajura, I think if I was going to call out anything, it's that we're partners, we're growing together, 
Hajura understands what charity needs to do for its clients. And we collaborate on solutions to, to help do that. And we actually do this. Um, I think there are a lot of, a lot of providers out there in the industry who will talk about being collaborative and talk about finding solutions. And what Cherry has found in working with Hajura is that they actually want to collaborate. They actually want to sit down and understand the problems you're having and how they can grow a solution that meets your needs. Um, most recently, that's apparent in some of the work we're doing on rate limiting. So one of the things that's really important for Cherry is that we're able to limit the number of API calls per minute, per day, per week, per month, because that's a, a popular way to provision an API, right? At different plans and cost levels and things like that. Um, Azure has worked pretty closely with us to understand what our needs are for rate limiting to make sure that the end solution will actually meet our needs and support those enterprise level clients. So one of many examples where Hajura has been an actual partner um, and we couldn't be happier with the solution here at Cherry, especially myself um, in my role. I think we are well equipped to support a growing customer base in the future. So that's all I have. Uh, thank you all for listening. I appreciate you taking the time.